Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green legendary bard deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around the two-mana enchantment bard class introduced in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. And on level one it says legendary creatures we control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on them and our deck is filled to the brim with legendary creatures that can benefit from this as well as the level two mana discount. So it's going to cost us an additional red and a green to get it to level two, in which case a legendary spells we cast cost a red and a green less to cast and this effect only reduces the amount of colored mana we pay but can still lead to some very explosive starts so typically if we have bard class in our opening hand we're gonna want to play it on turn two and then level it up to level two on turn three and then we can often still play some creatures afterwards like maybe Tarknar, which we can then play for free or a one mana magda or even a one mana zvela so that's the power of Bard class, leading to some very explosive starts. And then if we eventually run out of cards, we can still level it up to level 3 for 5 mana, in which case whenever we cast a legendary spell, exile the top 2 cards of our library, and we may play them this turn. So that can lead to a ton of extra card advantage, can even trigger that ability multiple times in the same turn, can also play lands with that ability, and thanks to the mana discount from level 2, it becomes easier to chain together multiple legendary spells in the same turn, and those will also come into play with additional plus one plus one counters on them. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, some of those legendary creatures include the full playset of Targnar, a 2 mana 2 2 legendary null, with pack tactics saying whenever Targnar attacks, if we attacked with creatures with total power 6 or greater this combat, attacking creatures get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. So nice combat ability that also benefits from the additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on our creatures. And for 4 mana we can double Targnar's power and toughness until end of turn, so that can also represent a ton of extra damage that the opponent needs to respect. Then we also have the full playset of Magda Brazen Outlaw, despite being the only dwarf in the deck. Still a 2-1 legendary dwarf berserker, saying whenever a dwarf we control becomes tapped, including Magda herself, we get to make a treasure token. So if Magda attacks or maybe taps to help crew an Isika's chariot, we get to make a treasure token to help us cast more spells. And if at some point we have five treasures, we can sacrifice them all and search our library for an artifact or dragon card to put on the battlefield. So that can potentially find our Isika's chariot or even an inferno of the star mounts as a powerful curve topper to help close out the game. Then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Zvela Ice Shaper, especially powerful because of the mana reduction from Bard class level 2. And then we can potentially play it for 1 mana, a 2-4 snow creature, and for 3 mana we can tap Zvela to create a colorless snow artifact token named Icy Manalith that can tap for 1 mana of any color. And for 8 mana we can tap Zvela to look at the top 4 cards of our library and cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. So another powerful card advantage engine in the late game. Then we've got two copies of a God of Winter, only interested in the creature half of the card, a 3-3 a legendary snow creature god, saying whenever the God of Winter attacks we can untap each snow permanent we control. So that includes some of our snow creatures, but of course also includes our snow lands. We've got 18 snow covered basics and three copies of Highland Forest that God of Winter can untap. So we can potentially use our mana in our first main phase to our various mana sinks, maybe level up our bard class or activate our instrument of the bards, which we'll get to in a second. And then we can still cast something else in our second main phase. So plenty of uses for that extra mana. And then we've got two copies of Burgi, God of Storytelling, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary creature god, which says whenever we cast a spell we add red mana, and until end of turn that red mana doesn't go away. Or we can cast Harnfell, Horn of Bounty, a 5-mana legendary artifact that can let us discard a card to exile the top two cards of our library that we can play this turn. So another nice card advantage engine that can maybe help us get rid of additional copies of legendary creatures that we already have in play and still put them to good use. Then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Isika's Chariot, which is an individually powerful card, but also has great synergy throughout the deck with Magda, which can crew and create a treasure token, and Bard class, which makes it one cheaper and still triggers the level 3 ability as well. And then we get a 4-4 legendary artifact vehicle that has a crew cost of 4, but it comes into play with two green cat creature tokens that are both 2-2s, and whenever the chariot attacks we create a token that's a copy of target token we control, so it can generate extra cat tokens, but can even copy our treasure tokens from Magda or the instrument of the bards. 
which is up next a one mana legendary artifact, saying at the beginning of our upkeep we may put a harmony counter on the instrument of the bard, and for four mana we can tap it to search our library for a creature card with mana value equal to the number of harmony counters on the instrument of the bard, reveal it, put it into our hand, and if that creature is legendary we create a treasure token and then shuffle. So instrument of the bards is a pretty slow and expensive card draw engine, but the goal is usually to play it early, forget about it, and start taking up the harmony counters to a number where we want it, and then once we run out of cards in hand we can start activating it, search up any legendary creature of the corresponding number, and then get a treasure token as well, so that sort of gives us a mana discount on our legendaries, and then also gives us a bit of utility, since on some numbers we have multiple creatures we can search up, especially on level 6, which is the number we want to get to as soon as possible, and then the Instrument of the Bards also has great synergy with our God of Winter, as we can potentially untap our lands to activate the Instrument of the Bards, and then still have the mana to cast whatever creature we searched up. And then moving on, at 4 mana we have a 1 of copy of Kolvori, God of Kinship, a 2-4 legendary creature god, saying as long as we control 3 or more legendary creatures, Kolvori gets plus 4, plus 2, and has Vigilance, which also pairs nicely with the activated ability, as we can then maybe attack with Kolvori and still activate her, looking at the top 6 cards of our library, and we may reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. Or we can potentially play the Ring Heart Crest, a 2 mana legendary artifact, that as it enters a battlefield, field we can choose a creature type, although the creature type that we choose with it doesn't really matter, because we can still tap it for green mana that we can spend only to cast creature spells of the chosen type or legendary creature spells, and since all the creatures in this deck are legendary, it doesn't really matter which creature type we name, so we can feel free to name Crab with it. And then we also have a 1 of copy of Toski, Bear of Secrets, a 4 mana 1-1 one, one legendary creature squirrel with indestructible, cannot be countered, but has to attack each combat if able, but then whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card. So great in combination with the tokens from Asika's Chariot. And the reason for some of these one-offs is that we can then potentially search them up with Instrument of the Bards, which is also why we have one creature at every mana cost, including at 5 mana, where we have Ashaya, Soul of the Wilds, a Star Star, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, and non-token creatures we control are forest lands in addition to their other types, so they can potentially help us ramp as well. And then at 6 mana, which is the number we eventually want to get to with our Instrument of the Bards, we have a 1 of copy of Phylath, a World Sculptor, a 5-5 five five Legendary Elemental, saying when it enters the battlefield we get to make an 0-1 green plant creature token for each basic land we control, and with Landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we can put 4 plus one plus one counters on target plant we control, so it's usually beneficial to play Phylath and then play land afterwards, so we can grow one of our plants right away. And then we also have a 1 of copy of Vorinclax, Monstrous Raider, the 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary Frex and Praetor with Trample and Haste that can potentially give us additional plus one plus one counters and shut down counter synergies from the opponent, especially great against opposing Sagas and Planeswalkers, which will enter the battlefield with half as much loyalty. And then we've got our two copies of Inferno of the Star Mounts, the new 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary creature dragon with Flying and Haste, cannot be countered, and has fire breathing as well. Interesting to note about some of our double green and double red creatures is that we can play multiple copies of Bard class, and if we get multiple of those copies to level 2, we can potentially cast an Inferno of the Star Mounts for 4 mana instead of for 4 and a red, so that's another interaction that can come up. And then rounding out the deck we've got 4 copies of Frostbite as a cheap interactive spell dealing 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, unless we control 3 or more snow permanents, in which case we deal 3 damage instead. And then we've got a 9 of each snow covered basic to enable it, as well as our 3 highland forests, and then 4 of the red green pathway. And of course the deck is entirely legal in the standard 2022 event, as all cards are rotation proof, so that's the event we'll be playing in today. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and yeah, this hand looks good. We've got some interaction with Frostbite, turn 2 Bard class, and we'll have a very nice turn 3 as we'll be able to level a Bard class, play free Targnar, play one mana Magda. Disciple makes me discard. Could get rid of Frostbites, since Kulvori is a nice follow-up to the Bard class as well. Can also play a free instrument once we level up Bard class, and that's a nice way to refuel against a discard-heavy deck. Dream Devourer, that's fine. Alright, level up Bard class, and then 
doesn't matter which color I keep up, I guess reds would be preferred. So not a bad turn three. Still have Colvori we can play and might even have the plus four plus two and vigilance bonus. And now instrument gives us long-term card advantage. Put a counter on instruments and then we can start by attacking. Play line first in case we need to pump Targonar. Tank tactics are turned on, and our opponent's just jumping. So they might have a sweeper lined up, although if it's Shadow's Verdict, it doesn't get rid of Colvori, so that seems like a fine play still. And Crippling Fear also doesn't kill Colvori. It's going to be a Soul Shatter instead. That works. Alright, so I think here I have a few options. I could search up a 2-drop with instruments. Although I think I prefer leveling up Bard class one more level. And then next turn we get to combo off. Could deal a ton of damage with Targonar as well. Although it's not quite lethal. So I'm kind of expecting a Shadow's Verdict here. Or maybe a Crippling Fear. Blood on the Snow also works. Okay, so that's gonna bring back one of their creatures. I could kill it. Sure. And then now we'll search with the uh, instruments. I think we get Svela, as we can play it for one mana and potentially combo off with our level 3 Bard class. A land I can play, Magda I can play, and then I can still like sell two more cards. Back up Magda and Burgi. I'll play Burgi. So, nice way to refuel. And even if they wipe the board, we can do this once again. If we go to level 4, I can still get Toski, since Colvori is dead. So despite being a creature-heavy deck, we can still fight through sweeper effects, thanks to some of our artifacts and enchantments. Also have the Horn of Bounty, which can do a similar job. Magda down, and we'll keep leveling up, can grab Toski. Soul Shatter will take it out, opponent still takes 7. And, uh, yeah, that's probably my turn. Alright, Trogger's Shadow makes me sacrifice two creatures. So I can get this to level 5 to get Ashaya, although Hasty Vorinclex will get the job done too. Now one nombo between Vorinclex and Instrument is if we have an Instrument on 5 counters, we won't be able to get it to 6 counters with Vorinclex in play, because it's gonna add 2 counters at once. So you have to be a little bit careful with those two, but usually if you have an uncontested Vorinclex, you're probably winning the game, and you can always decide to keep the same amount of counters on the instrument. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is pretty barren. No creatures. Instruments, while it can eventually find creatures, is probably too slow. So we'll take a mulligan. This we can keep. Not an exciting hand. But we'll try and make it work.
plenty of snow lands to synergize with our God of Winter at least. Opponents blue-green with a Druid class, so it might be more of a ramp deck. Bard class a draw, that is exciting. So do I still play God of Winter? I think I do. Since we can definitely make use of it an extra mana next turn. And then hopefully we get a good attack in, so we can play Bard class and level it up. And still play Svela. And Svela also good mana sync to synergize with God of Winter, since we can float our mana from our lands with the attack trigger and then essentially get double the mana. Okay, so Bard class attack. Floating the mana here doesn't accomplish much. Level it up. Play Svela. Could have played a Targnar with an extra counter on it. Maybe worth saving as a free way to trigger level 3 on Bard class. Opponent keeps on ramping. They can chum block with a dryad and sacrifice it to grab another land. Alrighty, so... I think it's worth it to play my land and maybe just level up Bard class. Attack with a team as opposed to activating Zvela. God of Winter also untaps Vela, so we could have attacked with it and still activated the ability, which is pretty sweet too. Trigger pack tactics, we can pump Targnar if we want. But I'm kind of liking playing Targnar and then seeing what we can find. Instruments. Okay, and then I guess we can still activate Zvela in the opponent's turn. So no need to do it now. Could potentially see a big creature like Koma hit the battlefield this turn. It's gonna be a Shia instead. Also quite synergistic with extra land drops that Druid class provides. Alright, so we've got a lot of options this turn. If I were to attack with a team, opponent pretty much has to block Targnar. That feels pretty good. So I can activate pre-combots. Or I could maybe go digging with Svela. Nah, we'll activate Targnar. Attack. This time I could have floated one extra mana. Although it's probably not going to make a huge difference. Also could have floated the mana for Manolith, so I guess could have had two extra mana here. Which might have been enough to activate Zvela's second ability. So our opponent blocks there. I was going to probably pump Targnar anyway. Although I missed out on another Manolith, didn't I? Oh well, play Bard class or maybe level up the other one. Point on top to five. Epiphany for an extra turn. Alright. This might be the turning point. Second Epiphany. Alright, so we're taking two. Opponent has ample blockers. And now a Scute Swarm as well. Times two. And a length. Okay, so the ground is stalled. Opponent's got plenty of birds in the air. So this is going to be tough. 
I grab a 2-drop, I could get another Targnar or a Magda. And that can trigger Bard class. I could also think about activating Zvela. Probably start by attacking and then floating a bunch of mana in response to the God of Winter trigger. I think I'm okay playing the land first, even though we could get an extra land with Bard class. So I will go full control to make sure I can float all the mana I want. Attack in response to the trigger. We can QQ float some mana. And then activates Vela. And finds chariots. Okay. Opponent's gonna chump. Trades for God of Winter. And that happens. Then now, probably just start by playing Magda. Find another Magda. Might as well keep going. Toski. I'll take a Toski. And then won't be able to play a Shia. Alright, still a pretty productive turn. So we'll pass. Could make one more treasure by crewing the chariot, but that still wasn't enough to play a Shia. Almost. Opponent can make a big land with a Druid class. Make sure to crew Chariot with Magda for an extra treasure. Go to level 3. Okay, so at level 3, what do we get? Let's take a look. Another Burgi or God of Winter. Could also go for the Horn of Bounty. So once again, a lot of options. Probably go for the Horn. Just two lands for now. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, the card advantage is just too much here. We've got our Bard class, we've got Svela, now the Horn of Bounty, and the instrument also slowly ticking up, at which point we can get some of our evasive creatures to end the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand, not the most exciting. But Targonar does have a little bit of synergy with God of Winter, since we can potentially float a mana when God of Winter attacks, and then use that mana to pump up our Targonar. Vorinclax a nice curve topper. All attack. And Prismari Command will take out or null. Yeah, I'll go with the uh, God of Winter still. And then, best case scenario, we draw something we can cast in our first main phase, untap our lands, still maybe cast something second main. Expressive Iteration, gonna be a nice two for one.
right, Burgi, or we could hold Burgi and play Horn instead, although they do have Prismari Command, which can destroy it. So, probably go for main phase Targnar. Attack in response to the trigger, I can float some mana if I want. Not that it really matters. And then... To Burgi or not to Burgi? I think given that we have a Vorinclex in hand that we want to get to, I don't really want to be discarding a land 6 if we draw it. So I'm fine playing an extra creature out. Although Horn of Bounty could be a nice way to combo with our extra mana from God of Winter. But getting blown out by Prismari Command doesn't sound very fun. Freezing Flame, we can Frostbite. Although I probably want to wait for them to cast a Burn Spell so they don't get to draw a card. Alright, this turn we can pump Targnar before attackers, so we trigger pack tactics. And next turn Vorinclex can help us close out the game. Another iteration. Finds Glimpse the Cosmos. Don't know if they have time to cast it. Opponent cast Glimpse, three mana left. So we face an interesting decision. I can slam down Vorinclex, hope the opponent doesn't have a counter spell, and attack for the win. I could attack Pumping Targnar, and if our opponent doesn't have instant speed removal, they would also be dead. Can probably assume they have something like Frostbite at the ready. Some leaning for Inclex here. And if they counter for Inclex, they still take 5 down to 3. But then things get more complicated. Uh, just a Prismari command. That should leave them dead. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand's a keep. Of course, want to draw a third land. So we can level a Bard class and play Magdon turn 3. And nice combo with Chariot as well. Put on black white, there's a land. Mark that down. Can still play Chariot and Toski, great follow up to a Chariot as well. Opponent's Amps and Colors, Binding, can take out the Bard class maybe or the Chariot. That's fine. And it's Toski time, we'll keep up red mana for Frostbite. Draw two. And sure, we'll play some more creatures out. I could play around something like Crippling Fear or Shadow's Verdict. Verdict doesn't kill Toski. Crippling Fear would wipe my entire board. So do I hold Targnar? Sure. We'll hedge our bets a little bit. Right, there's a Crippling Fear. So glad we held on to at least one extra creature. And then I can level up Bard class to give Targnar an extra counter. And then we can play 4 mana Inferno as an 8-8 next turn.
Sparring Regimen can get Containment Breach to destroy one Bard class. There it is. But her opponent passes. Maybe keeping up a removal spell. So they could have something like Soul Shatter to kill the Inferno. Question is, do we still want to run it out? If I level up a Bard class, her opponent just destroys the one that's level 3, so that's not very helpful. So I think we do play Inferno and Smash. And hope for the best. Right, there's a Soul Shatter, so... Been able to predict her opponent's past few plays. And then kind of have to hope they Containment Breach one of the Bard classes, we level it up. And then uh, we draw a few legendary creatures to enable it. Sadly only have single Frostbites for this Frog Hemoth, so yeah, that is going to get very large. So a little bit punished for playing the Dragon over, I guess, just passing the turn. So 9-9. Nine, nine. Well, we've got our work cut out for us. Can still attack into it and then finish it off with a Frostbite. I think I'm happy making that trade. Uh, I guess I wanted to double its power before attacking to enable pack tactics. But now it's too late. So... I guess I wasted a Frostbite here for no reason. Although if I did pump, our opponent would probably not have blocked to begin with. So maybe we would have been able to bait them into it. Alright, I'll pump now. So yeah, we maybe missed out on two damage. Although maybe by not pumping before attacking, the chance was higher that our opponent would have blocked. And maybe that's better. We'll see. Frog Hemoth does hit very hard. Especially with the Sparring Regiment out. We can kill the Pest Token from Containment Breach. Hmm, Shadow's Verdict instead. Yeah, that's gonna be hard to beat. Soul Shatter into Frog Hemoth was very punishing, and now we're dead. Alright, well, even if you sort of play around what the opponent has, it doesn't always work out. Can level up a Bard class. But uh, Frog Hemoth, very effective here. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a pretty slow hand featuring two six drops, although we've got our Bard class. So the hope is that we draw into something like Magda, which can help us ramp, or God of Winter. Facing turn one Sentinel. All right, Chariot's a pretty good draw too. So next turn, level up Bard class, play free Targnar, and then play Chariot on the following turn. Opponent's blue-green with a Dragon's Guard Elite. Perfect target for Frostbite. So level up Bard class. Opponent does seem to be holding something, and they might have a way to protect the Elites, thanks to the mana from Sentinel. So I don't think I want to Frostbite just yet. Alright, but we can respond. Fizzle the charge through, opponent doesn't draw a card. If they had a Snakeskin Veil, we could have gotten punished for being proactive with the Frostbite. Alright, land is good. So we can attack, play Chariots. Could see a pump spell on the Sentinel. Quandrix commands to bounce it. 
All right. I mean, we can replay it for free, so. Quandrox Apprentice, okay. And I can already play one of my five mana creatures. Maybe Vorinclax first, so the Inferno comes into play with additional counters. They're both pretty great. Attack, enable pack tactics, copy our cat token. And our opponents in a world of hurt. We'll take out the Sentinel. And this Inferno should help us close out the game next turn. Okay, Orvar. So that's what they're trying to do. Could technically kill it with Frostbite, but let's just smash face. Extra counter thanks to Vorinclex. And yeah, that was a pretty good curve out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a very nice opening hand. Got our turn 2 Bard class, and then we can even play 1 mana as well on turn 3 after leveling it up. Or a Magda. Opponent on blue red. Expressive iteration on turn 2. Kind of a desperation play, or they just have a lot of iterations in hand and they don't mind firing one off. We'll prioritize playing our snow lands first to enable frostbite. Ooh, wow, this is gonna be a sweet turn. Level of Bard class. And then I think we lead with Magda. And play free Targnar. And then might be a game where we play Horn of Bounty instead of Burgi. Alright, Prismari commands. Kills Magda. Start by playing a land and attacking. I guess Horn of Bounty does run into another Prismari command, destroying it. Dragon's Fire, so I could pump Targnar to save him. Might be worth it. Opponent discards Magma Opus. Take six. Can also decide to level up my Bard class to level three before playing more stuff out. And there's another expressive iteration. Which finds unexpected windfall, which they can still play. Discarding Disdainful Stroke. So three cards in hand, three mana available. And Dragon's Fire takes out Targonar. That's fine. Alright, well, now... Leveling up Bard class becomes even more tempting. I could play Targonar right away to trigger it, but I wouldn't be able to play any of the cards we exile. So I maybe keep it for next turn. And what does this turn look like? I think just level up Bard class and pass a turn. Hope the opponent doesn't have a way to bounce it somehow. And then next turn we get to combo off. Yeah, that seems okay. Alternatively, I can just play a ton of creatures out. Play two mana Burgi, play Zvela, play Targonar. Yeah, maybe that's just better. And let the opponent answer the board. Still a Frostbite up. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and this is pretty much the ideal opening hand. Double Bard class. Could still come in handy. 
but the first copy is what we are excited about. Third bar class is a bit much, so hopefully we can draw other spells. But still potentially gives us additional plus one counters. Alright, I guess it's good to have a backup in this case. Sure. Got another rip apart. Alright. Well, I guess the third copy was still useful. So, I can play Bard class, level it up, play free Targnar. Or I can play Chariots. I think we still go for the class. And that might eat another removal spell. Frostbite. Alright, next turn can play Chariot plus one of our other legendaries. And Old Gold Dragon gets in the red zone. That one's pretty difficult to race. But we'll try. So I can actually crew the Chariot to make a mana with Magda. To then play Zvela. And then next turn, maybe a level of bar class to level 3. If we find a Frostbite, that can answer the dragon nicely. Follow their retreat. Can maybe put it out of range, although they don't seem to have a land for the turn. Okay, so level of bar class seems fine, and then... Can crew with the cat tokens. Could also copy the Manolith token from uh, Zvela with a chariot, but I think making an extra 2 2 might still be better, unless we're afraid of a sweeper effect, which is also a reasonable concern. If I make a token, can I still level up my bard class? 3. I guess we can. Alright. Attack. And then activate this. Okay, so now we've got a bit more insurance in case of a sweeper. Another rip apart takes out my part class, sadly. And excavation. Okay, so I could activate Zvela here. Uh, maybe attack with a chariot first, because if I find a hasty dragon, I'm probably keeping it on defense anyway. I guess Vorinclex is a reason to do it first. So we'll activate Zvela. And Frostbite seems good enough here. And then now I'll probably make another cat. I have plenty of mana. Alright, so opponent had plenty of answers for Bard class, but we're still looking like we're in good shape. Plenty of Magnus to work with, but let's see what Svela hits. All right, Phyleth. And we'll copy another cat token. Okay, Pona needs a sweeper. Pona's a 10. as well activate Svela one last time. But her opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, got to have some very explosive turns thanks to Bard class, even though her opponent was able to answer all of them eventually. And then got to see Svela in action, the synergy between the 
IC tokens and a Seacast Chariot, also pretty cool. So yeah, this deck has a lot going for it. Of course, the deck looks a lot different with Bard class in play as opposed to without. So it is pretty important that we find it. But yeah, the deck has plenty of card draw engines throughout the deck, even without a Bard class. So it can play some grindy games, but of course, as we have seen, can also have some very explosive starts and close out the game very quickly. So I was definitely impressed by Bard class's performance today. And of course, with any future expansion that introduces additional red or green legendary creatures, Features, the deck can only improve. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.